Welcome back to Stripe Dev Live. Today we're about the view ecosystem and Stripe. We have two really awesome guests. With us today is Joffrey Tiquez, um, the creator and maintainer of View Stripe and just an awesome developer overall. Welcome, Joff. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, hello. I hope everyone can hear me. Thanks, Charles, for the introduction. Yeah, thanks for inviting me here in Stripe Live Q&A. My name is Joff. I'm from Manila. I'm the creator of View Stripe, and I'm currently working as the tech lead and head of front-end development for MyCure. So it's basically a startup company here in Manila. And I like open source and I have a bunch of JavaScript and Vue.js projects that you can check out on my GitHub. And for my hobbies, I do rock climbing and cycling. Awesome. And we all, we're also joined by Darren, who's on the software engineering team here at Stripe and also an open source developer, also someone who maintains quite a few projects as a maintainer and a creator. Darren, would you introduce yourself as well? Yeah, thanks, Charles. So yeah, I'm Darren, uh, software engineer at Stripe. So team I'm on, we handle authentication uh, for a number of products at Stripe, but most notably like API keys. So as it relates to Vue, I've been a user of Vue since around like 2017. So I've done some work experience in Vue, but born out of that work experience has been open sourced a few libraries, most recent one being Swerve. So this is a Vue port of a React data fetching library, SWR. And yeah, I don't do any front end in Stripe. <laughs> so that's what, that's what I'm currently at. Cool. So just to kick things off, let's say, let's start with you, Darren. Can you give us a quick down, just like a quick rundown of what is Vue for those of, of us that may have joined who are want to learn more about the Vue ecosystem and Vue as well? Sure. Yeah. So Vue.js, I think if you just went to the website, it would market itself as the progressive JavaScript framework. So it's a way to create JavaScript apps, insert interactivity into websites, HTTP websites. So you're being able to progressively enhance portions of your app that you want to make more interactive with JavaScript and make it a little easier to do. And in terms of, yeah, I think that's basically it. Yeah, I think that's a great rundown. It is very much like the progressive web framework. You can add it as just like a script tag, download it from a CDN and use it like a bit of a jQuery type of situation, very lightweight, very easy to use. So let's, here's a question for both of you. And let's start with Joff. How did you get started with Vue and what was your first project? Yeah. So basically for me, it was actually more of a company directive rather than a personal choice. So there was a time when we were thinking of upgrading our web apps, which were made in AngularJS. Uh, if you can guys remember that, uh, basically we were upgraded upgrading our web apps into a newer framework and so our options back then were angular 2 and then react.js and and of course the relatively new version 2 of UJS. and uh, yeah basically we were assigned to to do research on those frameworks and i was the one who was assigned to to do research for Vue.js. and then yeah long story short we did a lot of uh, benchmarking and prototyping you know all those sorts of uh, comparisons for the three frameworks and then uh, yeah finally we uh, we decided to pick Vue.js and along with the beautify as our main css uh, slash component library and yeah from there i got addicted to Vue. basically yeah, my, my first project was uh it's, it's an internal uh web application for our company and then my first open source project for vue.js was yeah it's Vue stripe so i've been maintaining Vue stripe for like about four years now uh, i think awesome and what about you yeah it was about 2017 it was a job we were a php shop so i think a lot of the success that Vue has had has been around like inside of the PHP ecosystem, specifically Laravel. So we were maintaining a few apps that were didn't have any, necessarily any tied to any backend, but we did have a PHP backend that we were looking to integrate. And we did reach at first for the progressive advancement where you're basically just injecting it into a few components that you want more reactive. But then as we built more and more onto it, this was like for an e-commerce platform like uh, Etsy. So it was like an Etsy type platform where we had like interactive search and different, whether you're liking products, et cetera. So we were trying to make the app um, not have too much JavaScript front loaded, like a single page application. And we were just progressively enhancing it, but we did weigh a bunch of options and Vue was like at the time, this was like before the composition API even. So a lot of uh, the benefits that Vue brought was the uh, learning curve. Someone say like, oh, how do I get, how do I learn React or how do I learn Vue? And so Vue is really just go read the docs. The docs were such a powerful uh, learning tool and they still continue to be just a, I think a North star for a lot of other technical projects. Mm -hmm. And so because of the benefits of the docs and needing the team, we were actually a team of mostly backend engineers at the time and we needed to all become full stack. And at the time it seemed like front end was overwhelming or there was too many tools or 
you had to install a thousand dependencies, but with Vue, it just seemed like very elegant and a way to dip our toes into reactivity as it relates to like the newer frameworks that were coming out at the time. And so we went with Vue as a way to expedite. And I think for a lot of people, when they see Vue for the first time, it says, oh, this just makes sense. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And when you package it into single, single file components, it just clicks for a lot of people. Yeah, that, I feel like that's a, like a very common narrative. Like you're oftentimes like a backend developer, especially with the PHP Laravel ecosystem. Um, I'm really curious to know if either what the backstory is about that. Was there like, what exactly is it about Laravel and Vue that leads so many people to use the two together? Is it, do, do either of y'all know the backstory of that one? Yeah, actually that's, I, I was also curious about that one. So that I have actually the same question for, for Darren, like. I, I haven't really tried uh, Vue with uh, Laravel ever because there's really no need for me to. But yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, also curious how the experience. Yeah, historically, from what I understand, was that Vue before Laravel signed off onto it, it was lesser known. It was considered a pet project. And Laravel at the time, Taylor Otwell, the creator, I think him and a few of their core team, this is a, this is actually a little bit of speculation. So I think that they were trying to figure out like what would be the default front end for Laravel because it is like a Rails type framework that allows you to do the whole MVC flow of a view controller. So being able to pick a view layer that also has that single that uh, single page application type interactivity being able to pick a framework that makes sense for people coming from this like old style php into laravel and then migrating them into a javascript paradigm it was at one point taylor outwell made the made view the default like when you installed laravel because of that i think it took off in in that sphere and then it had a ripple effect through two other two other frameworks that's really interesting. So that's incredibly interesting. One of the things that, that like both of you touched on, it sounds like you started off with Vue because it was like driven by a, a company at the a decision by your company. But afterwards, you're both open source maintainers of different Vue projects, several Vue projects. So what is it about Vue that kept you, that captured you so that you decided to use it not only for just uh, work projects, but perhaps for like open source projects that might not be related to the things that you're doing at work. Why do you like Vue? Right. For me, it's basically the, the learning curve. My experiences in, in web development started in vanilla JavaScript, and then I discovered jQuery. And then after that, the Angular, Angular JS, the, the first version. And yeah, when I started to develop things in Vue, it, it, just like uh, Darren said, it somehow just clicks for me and everything is, is easier. So <laughs> I guess that's it. Yeah, I have a similar, my first job was Angular and then my second job was in React, and this was like right when they were introducing like some of the Babel transforms to be able to do class components. And uh, it was definitely a coming to view. I felt there's definitely this thought behind React that it like clicks for people coming out of like functional paradigms. So you're able to compose and you feel like the function, the functional aspects of the programming language, like JavaScript is it's like a first class citizen, whereas with Vue, it's using like proxies and having to observe side effects, not in uh, the most functional way. So because of that, the magic aspects of Vue, I don't think actually, like at first they seem like it's too magical. Oh, I update this and then it fires off this. Whereas when React, you know, you're always explicitly setting state or running effects. And so because of that, I think like the magic aspects, they get in your way in some regards, but for the most part, they just click for the majority of use cases. And then when you want to opt out of them, Vue has those either like JSX opt-outs to where you're actually explicitly creating JSX fragments, or you're having to use some of the primitives with the composition API. So in Swerve, you have to use a few of the, I wouldn't say like not paved road methods to because it's like at the library but when you're actually developing applications you're not developing for libraries so you don't you can you don't have to worry about um, as much whereas i feel like in some of the other frameworks it's a little more verbose definitely and speaking of swerve so that's one of the larger projects that you maintain question for you both darren and joff like what are the largest view projects that open source view projects that you currently maintain and why did you build them we start with you yeah basically for me it's uh the largest project that i'm maintaining is view stripe and then i also have some collection collection of filters and directives and how i got into how i started view stripe is also like uh, similar with how i started with view so basically in my company we were uh, asked to implement a stripe checkout 
for one of our products and then yeah from there at first i was i was just like developing a reusable component and then i decided to upload it to github and then uh, suddenly some people are you're asking upgrades for the project and then i i suddenly realized that the that I accidentally uh, created an open source project. So I just went with it and upgrade everything. Uh, so basically, if there's a demand for an upgrade or, or an addition to to the features, yeah, I give time for it. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. What about you, Dan? Yeah, like you mentioned, Swerve is probably my largest project. It's, it's a project that's still under the organization at my previous company, but I continue to be the sole maintainer for it. And it's, it's big in the sense that I probably get the most issues for it right now. I also maintain a library called View Auto Suggest, which is a component that abstracts away some of the combo box plus like ARIA controls for if you want to make a auto suggest component or some auto complete component like accessible, I maintain that. And that's probably the longest running one that I've maintained. So it doesn't have as, as, as many incoming issues. I'm currently thinking about migrating it to View three at the moment, whereas Swerve already exists for V3. Awesome. So Sean just asked, what do you guys think of Svelte? Which is like the, I've heard that one <laughs> cropping yeah. up a lot. So I'm really interested in what y'all think about that right. one as well. I think it's really awesome. So Svelte is this amazing framework that sort of flips the script with a lot of the things that we thought were possible with JavaScript and interactivity. And it takes it in a way that I think is really appealing because it has that same spirit of view, which is let's progressively enhance some components and let's do so in a way that is intuitive. And when you read Svelte, you're just like, it's a breath of fresh air. It's oh, okay, I update that and that component updates. But then it also, I think, pushes the boundary for what the other frameworks are needing to come to grips with, which is that things like the composition API with Vue and things like Hooks and React, they are they can be hard for not just beginning use cases, but even medium to advanced use cases. And so Svelte, I think, has this amazing ecosystem of things and Vue is actually borrowing from it. At first, people were opposed to JSX and then with Svelte, they're opposed as they're like, what's going on with this compiler? This isn't even actually valid JavaScript. Like this isn't an actual method when I run it, or these tokens, these sigils that you have to put in front of your variables to make sure that they're reactive. So Vue's borrowing that stuff from them, and I think it's it's only benefiting everyone. Right, uh, likewise. So yeah. yeah, yeah, likewise. So I agree with. So basically, a funny thing is, uh, just this morning I was trying trying out this belt, and uh, yeah, the framework is awesome, and the way they design the the things, how they do the things that uh, they are doing, basically, it's a lot for me. It's a, a bit. I'm getting a feeling of it's a bit like a more low level than than compared to view and to react but definitely uh, overall it's a great framework and i think it, it will go far one really interesting they think i saw all about svelte recently was when you actually write libraries for view and react like a lot of times they're like react auto suggest or view stripe or with with svelte i was actually running into these vanilla js libraries so they were just like for anyone to implement in whatever app if you're angular or whatnot and I was looking at a couple of um, recent ones. Like I'm trying to remember the names. It was like a it was a walkthrough for like being able to see different like parts of your app, like guide users to different elements. And I looked under the hood, and it was actually built in Svelte and then just compiled to JavaScript. So with like Vue.js and React, a lot of times you have these front loaded script tags to say, "Well, I'm using React 16," and then anything else knows about that global React. But with Svelte, like because it compiles away, you can get smaller bundles and you don't have, it's not like I need Svelte in a script tag before I load this other library. And so I thought that was really cool. Just like seeing it as like an engine for vanilla JavaScript uh, libraries. It sounds like, it sounds like I need to test out Svelte. It sounds like we all need to test out Svelte. There's like a lot of good stuff apparently in that framework. Is there anything, so Darren, you mentioned that Vue has actually picked up some things from Svelte. Having never used it myself, what are some of those things that are felt like you would say in Vue or probably I'm imagining it's Vue 3? Yeah, there's these things called reactivity transforms is what the docs refers to them as. And the setup script is, I think, borrowed from uh, Svelte because essentially when you looked at like a Svelte component, there's no... Here's the function, here's the export, here's the, it's just, here's the JavaScript and it just works with the template. You don't have to tell the template, like what you're sending it. And so set up script in Vue allows you to just say, hey, this script tag, you denote it with the keyword setup and then everything inside of the script tag will be exported for availability in the template. Then you have these things uh, like refs. So refs are a primitive inside of Vue that allow you to hook into the reactivity for the composition API. So because of that composition API ref, you have to tell the template 
or I'm sorry, you have to tell the other functions inside of your um, script tag, oh, this is a ref, so I need to actually call dot value. And the calling that dot value is a little cumbersome. You can add a sigil to your ref instantiation via dollar sign, and then Vue will actually at compile time transform it to be something that the interpreter can handle. And so you don't, everything doesn't need to call dot value. It just sort of like works, which is, as I understand it, borrowed from Svelte. I didn't know that was a thing. I'm going to be using that a lot. I found from like migrating from like view two to view three, having to call dot value on things that you declare as reactive. Sometimes if you're using like an extension, like I think like Volar will remind you to do it or do it automatically for you. But it is definitely like one of those things can occasionally trip people up. Speaking of the composition API and refs and things of that nature, how has Vue changed since you started using it? I would say a lot because as someone who's used, has been using Vue.js for so many years now. So like I, I encountered the, the limitations for the, the current options API so many times for, for a lot of my projects and then and just comparing it to how composition api works it's the comparison been the, the changes is like uh huge so basically j just from the composition api you can tell the, that there's really a great uh, a big difference between the yeah it's changed i was part of a team that was 100 percent options api and then we introduced the composition beta so the composition API um, has a view to shim so that you can actually start using it before you migrate to view three. And so actually Swerve is an options API only library. It doesn't actually work with, I'm sorry, it's a composition only API library. So it doesn't actually work with the options API. So because of that, you need, it has a, a peer dependency of the composition API shim. And then the, there's another version or of uh, view3 explicitly. And so anyway, my team that we were migrating from options API to composition API, that, that was a pretty big change for a lot of people. It definitely is it, it's not just a few like syntax updates your components change fundamentally. But luckily, you can do it per component. You don't have to. It's not like a full rewrite of your app and so you can optionally hook into and you can even create like wrappers around options in uh, components to hook into reactivity if you need to. So yeah, so change for the better, in my opinion. That's good. Right. Definitely. Speaking of Vue 3, it sounds like you've already adopted it for some of your projects, Darren, or at the very least, like you're using the shim so that you can do the composition API with Vue 2. I'm curious, are if you have Vue 2 libraries, are you thinking about adopting uh, Vue 3 anytime? And if so, what are those features that you're looking forward to when you migrate from Vue 2 to Vue 3? And we can start with you, Joff. Right. Yeah. So definitely. Yes. Yeah, so I would, I would love to migrate my projects into Vue 3 because as far as I know, the default for Vue now is the version 3, right? So uh, I think it's inevitable to, to move uh, from Vue 2 to Vue 3. But yeah, the plans are to migrate little by little. And then uh, maybe for Vue Stripe, I'm thinking of creating a separately new version for a Vue, uh, for version uh, 3 of Vue.js. And then we'll just ha have the Vue 2 version exist uh, alongside with the new version for some time until it finally deprecates or, or the demand for view to you know decreases uh, over time but yeah yeah i'm in a similar sort of story as of two weeks ago view 3 became the quote-unquote new default and because of that i um, mean it, it means that library authors are in they're encouraged to make the default version when you install the package be the three version now because of that i've taken the approach that similar to what joff is referring to where swerve was Mostly the version that you install, it would require a peer dependency of the composition API for Vue 2. And then the beta version was actually the three version. So now I'm in the process of flipping that so that once you install it, it'll yell at you if you're trying to install it for Vue 2. And then if you want to go down, then you would install like a lesser version. And then basically those would be minor patches um, for any backwards port. And then eventually just stop supporting it because at some point you have to stop supporting versions. I just don't have a lot, enough time. Have you started migrating any of your projects from Vue 2 to Vue 3, like just like initially? And if so, what has the developer experience been like? Has Have the Vue core maintainers done anything to make it easier on you? If so, if you've might started to migrate any projects? That's a great For question. me, I haven't done anything yet. Yeah, for me, I, ha I haven't really any done anything yet with, with regards to the Vue 3 version in any of my libraries. Yeah, that's a good you question. Hear? If you were using the Vue CLI, which at uh, my last company, we had to migrate to the Vue CLI and it was, it was nice because essentially they abstract away a lot of the Webpack config that you don't necessarily need to, and then you can hook into it as you need. 
So for Vue 3, a lot of the encouragement is to move to Vite, which is the bundler that is also maintained by Evanu. And so hooking into that, I think that probably is your biggest issue, or at least it's... And the, the other big point is just that the library and the ecosystem has to catch up. So if you're using like built-in components that are maintained with in tandem, the router or Vuex, which is now being migrated to Pina, then I think you're, you're pretty good. But I th my, my experience is that you end up relying on libraries that aren't as popular and that sort of you need to plan it in advance to make sure that those libraries like have alternates that you can switch to because if they're not going to migrate to Vue 3, then you have a problem. So one of the big changes from Vue 2 to Vue 3, and one of the things that we've talked around, but maybe we should talk about is just the composition API. And it's just such a big change. It almost feels a bit like React hooks in so much that it allows you to reuse logic between components. You can, of course, create composable and use them throughout your components. What are your thoughts on this new API? Is it all good? Are there any things to watch out for? And I, we can start with you, Darren, since it sounds like you've been using it even before, it, even before Vue 3 was the new standard. Yeah, I was definitely very excited when Hooks was released to React. And I was, I, I think Evan, you had a prototype within a week of the release of Hooks. He was also on board with just the idea. And then the composition API came out. So I just saw like all of the pain that I experienced in React for a lot of composition of state. This was solved with hooks. Now, and when you say solved, it, it becomes, it changes the way that you develop in a lot of ways. You're thinking in terms of effects and you're thinking in terms of reactivity across components and not just inside of components, but inside of these composables, like you say. So you, you create these primitives or these composables. Actually, that's a distinction. Vue calls them composables and React calls them hooks. They're essentially the same thing. But at the under the hood, you're looking at the reactivity models are different. So with React, you just have a lot of like corollaries like use effect or watch use effect inside of uh, view. And so these different primitives can change the way that you think about programming. And yeah, it, it, be, it becomes, it can become a, a learning experience, but I think for the most part, it makes it easier. I agree with the Darren there. So like with my experience in, in, with my playing with a uh, composition API, with just a few testing, I just, I, I got, I already got the feeling that it's always to be going to be better than the options API. And I, I, I would agree with Darren with when he said that it will force you to think differently in a way that how you approach the problem when creating your components. So like, but I have here some notable pros and cons for my experiences when using composition API. So yeah, overall it, it will boost the reusability of your, uh, of the logic. So everything's kept in the one, one place. It's easier to read and especially in uh, larger projects. So what I've been maintaining, uh, definitely migrating to comp composition API would be a really, uh, great help for us. And, uh, but there's just one thing I, I don't want to be picky, but the way they use the, that, that value in the reps of variables. So sometimes it gets a little bit confusing in when you're using it in the, in the setup method. So like when you're going to mutate the value of that specific variable, you're going to have to access the that value uh, field but if you're going to just use it in in uh, let's say a watch a watcher you don't have to do that so for me there's it's just a little bit confusing at first maybe especially for the beginners but yeah no big deal and also the way they like on the setup method the way that the way they allow you to export everything in just one object without without dis distinction for which is which so, so everything's bundled together in one object so the data the properties and the method so it's for me it's just a little bit confusing as well but uh, overall the uh, composition api is, is is way better than the options api yeah i agree with you joff it definitely is can be confusing and also like the reactivity of it you have to be mindful of what is reactive and what isn't so there are like right. ESLint rules that help you. Oh, you're trying to destructure this function. It's going to lose reactivity. For instance, like the setup script itself, like receives props and callbacks to root context and whatnot. But if you try and destructure those immediately, like you immediately lose reactivity of those things. And so there's some, there's some linting around it, but it still gets you. Like I would say a good portion of the issues that I get in my open source projects but for, I guess it's just notably, but because of Swerve, because Swerve is a composition hook or a composable, I get these issues where people are either destructuring or they are, they don't quite understand uh, re reactivity enough to where I'm just educating them by linking them back to the docs. And 
that's not it's not because they're dumb it's just because it's there are some gotchas with it and once you understand them you can work around them and use them to your advantage but it definitely gets you when you're first doing it yeah i also remembered uh, having that same problem in view so like the reactivity is it has a really big caveat when you're actually a beginner so especially when you're uh, interacting with arrays and then the objects sometimes spreading things will lose their activities i think it's a real problem to the point that they actually created the like a section of about it on their documentation so i think it's just a similar problem from you one of the things that you both brought up was that part of the appeal of view is that it's really easy to use do you feel and it sounds like the composition api is makes things way more flexible it's it makes things way more flexible but i'm wondering do you think that the composition api makes view less beginner friendly at least view three less beginner friendly than view two because it's not as opinionated about how you structure how you structure your component and like outlining what's reactive and what's not there's not a section where it's your data goes here computer goes here etc i think it's it will going to be a problem i think for me at least because some uh, of my juniors are more comfortable with with the structured a more structured way of doing things so in the options api you, you literally everything is is there you you just have to, to read the documentation that and then you will and then you will know where uh, the data goes the watch your go methods and everything the, not, not a bit more flexible but way more flexible do you think that something like the composition api something that feels like react hooks is essentially inevitable for any framework at this point. It just seems like such a powerful concept and tool. Do you think that like we were going to have something like this in Vue 3 and that in general frameworks are going to have something that's similar? Is it inevitable? It's hard to predict the future. And so for instance, I don't know if every, like with Svelte, like there's no, there's no component tree to have to walk and there's no, the, there's no virtual DOM. So because of that, there's the frameworks like as they exist, like they don't have to build upon the old necessarily. And so composables are like a way to hook into the reactivity of the library, but it's it's not necessarily, yeah, I don't know if every component, it, it feels right for Vue and React, but I'm not sure it feels right for every backend language or a lot of, a lot of developers still like maybe thinking about like event-based state. So being able to Instead of reacting to like changes on setters and getters via proxies, maybe like you're reacting to an event bus that is independent of whatever language you're in. Yeah. So sort of road is open. Sorry, Joff, you were saying something. I, I interrupted you. Right. So yeah, I agree with Darren there. So yeah, basically it's hard to tell the future, but given the pattern from other frameworks, I think it's not guaranteed that this technique in, te in the technology will be it be present in other frameworks because as for React and, and Vue.js, so we thought that previously we thought that the, the best thing was a virtual DOM and then suddenly it came up with something. New. Yeah, it's not predicting. So eventually when you're building like a bigger application, you run into having to figure out like how you're going to manage all your state. And there's historically there's been Vuex, but there uh -huh. has recently been things popping up like Pina. I think I saw another one on Twitter. I forget the name of it, but some guy created another option. Do y'all have an opinion on how you manage like state and which state store you use if you use any? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I've been I've been using Vuex from the start, and I haven't uh, tried any alternative yet. But I only use a uh, store when I absolutely needed them. But for most of my applications, I I, I just use the local state of the component, and then yeah, for me, Vuex is is enough for what. For my for what I need at least. Yeah, we use Vuex for Options API, and then I was looking to migrate MLS company to Pina, and then I was excited to see that it's supplanting Vuex in this in the like sort of approved index of libraries that Vue is supporting. So it's becoming the new Vuex essentially. And because of that, I I think type like because TypeScript is king, like being able to have this TypeScript tool chain as it relates to state and your components and your templates like the golden path where you're able to like change something on the back end and it trickles down across your entire typing system. And that was something that we were really hoping to do, but Volar, which is now becoming Vue TSC, which is the command line utility for the TypeScript compiler inside of Vue components. So because of that didn't exist when I was doing it. And so Pina was nice because it was like, okay, I might not be able to type check, but I can at least hook into the TypeScript compiler to see the types of my events and see the typings of my store. And so if I'm hooking into a mutation or some some event in my, my store, I can actually see that type and uh, detect 
problems before they happen. Speaking of typing, one of the differences between Vue 2 and Vue 3 is just TypeScript support um, in general, in so much that it's more of a first-class citizen and like a top of mind consideration. Do you plan to use TypeScript in your newer projects? Are you like looking forward to it? Do you plan to go back to your old projects and add typing? If you haven't types everywhere, that's my opinion. I would use TypeScript everywhere all the time. That'd be my opinion. I'm not uh, really a big fan of TypeScript, at least uh, up until now that I have been handling projects, big projects without TypeScript. It's a headache, but uh, yeah, I've been actually, I've been planning to, to, to dive into TypeScript, especially when, as Charles said, it became like, uh, so I think I will be forced to, you know, learn TypeScript and implement it in, uh, view stripe view version three. I think it's just a necessity at this point. Actually, I had a question for Jeff. Do you, like, what's your contributor stuff look like? Is this a good place to ask people to contribute? I have a casual contributor, those, the ones that are like contributing to the documentation. And then I also have contributors that are like fixing some small bugs and uh, some typographic uh, errors. But mostly I do the, the, the most of the works for, for my library. And I uh, recently Charles uh, helped me with implementing one of uh, the element feature in Ustripe. But yeah, uh, most of my contributors are like, I, I would say, uh, I would categorize them as like ca just uh, casual contributors. So just for the chat, I, I need to know, because this is a, almost a bit of a, a thing. So who's, t who's team TypeScript? Who's the, just like in the chat, if you would ever start a project without TypeScript, please let me know, because it seems like at this point, pretty much everyone, if they're starting a project and TypeScript support it, you're going to start with TypeScript. I myself haven't, haven't really dug into it. I'm like Joff there, but just curious. Joff, I actually want to dive into why you, why you're not necessarily a fan of, of TypeScript. But yeah, I, I guess the, the words that I use is, is wrong. I'm not really not a fan, but I just don't have enough uh, use cases for me that they, I usually do things on demand. Like, so if there's no need for something to be done with uh, a specific uh, tool or technology, I don't do it because most of my time I, I'm doing my, uh, I'm doing like company projects and then for my free time, which is, is, is very little. That's the only time that I, you know, I get to do what I want for my project. So for instance, in view stripe, so I just decided to do it the way I already know. There's no really a decision point where I decided that, oh no, I don't want to use a uh, TypeScript. It's just that I, d I didn't really have the, the luxury of time to, to study TypeScript and then implement it. Yeah. Basically just for that reason. Awesome. We are, we're nearing, we're nearing our time here. So. One quick, we got, we have more time, of course, but let's say Evan Yu's listening and core team's listening. What are some, what are some areas that you feel the Vue ecosystem kind of lags behind React and Angular or like just in general? And we can even throw uh, Svelte in there as well. First, thank you, Evan, if you are listening. I am a big fan. For sure, I've just been super impressed with React's first class with TypeScript, not to be too much of a fanboy, but it's just TypeScript is so nice for putting that into your front end and being able to like flow and have confidence when you make changes, especially because we move so much of our interactivity and logic into the front end. I just, I, I would just say keep investing in TypeScript support and making sure that it continues to uh, be supported. And I'm just like, yeah, really thankful for all of the initiatives that have gone into supporting it. Yeah. Same with me. Yeah. So basically, I, I, uh, to be honest, I'm really satisfied with how things are going right now. So I can't really, there's, uh, to be honest, there's no complaint or, or anything like that from my end, but yeah, the pacing of the development is really uh, good as well. So yeah. Everything's good. So no, no complaints, no wishes. That's some high praise. So what are some of your favorite view libraries just as like developers of open source projects yourself? Are there any that you would like to call out? for being particularly awesome? Yeah, I was a big XState fan at my last company. I've contributed a little bit to the Composable for XState, and I, I think it's a really great library to use and can be used either at this, at the global level, and like pervading your entire app, or it can just be used in a component if you just want to like maintain something like form state. And other than that, I really, I have really like loved Pina, so I would, I would give a plus one to Pina as well. Right, so for me, I would definitely pick Quasar. So it's not necessarily like a library or anything, but it's, it's, it's more of a framework, but for so many years I've been trying to develop mobile applications using Vue and then nothing really suited my taste. But from my experience, Quasar really is the, is the best uh, out there. I love Quasar also beautify. So it helped me like it saved us a bunch of time, you know, developing our UI and uh, it's, you know, basically the, just the convenience of having those libraries and frameworks is 
Yes. Awesome. And Mikey B is shouting out view use, which I think I've heard of. I'm like looking at its GitHub page and one of its gold sponsors is Evan U. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty strong endorsement there. Uh, recently it's great. Plus one yeah. Five. I used it for this, like a little app that I built for a Cloudflare hackathon. So I just linked to the source code, but essentially it gives you a bunch of different utils to play with like interactivity. One of the, the benefits to it is that if you want to play with like animation or any sort of like browser API, view use hooks, hooks into those and can like, you can pick and choose different uh, pieces like animation, or you want to check when the network dropped, your users don't have Wi-Fi anymore or different. It, it's huge. So it, it is, if you go to the docs, you'll just see like all the different, different things. Uh, use media query is a popular one where you're detecting that the window size is changing and yeah that sounds really nifty so we're drawing near our time it's pretty much uh, we're pretty much at the hour but before we sign off now's the time to do some shout outs so joff is there anything you'd like to share with the audience or talk about right yeah awesome so yeah basically i just want to flag a view stripe so i i, I really need contributors guys so if you if you if you really want to learn vjs and also, if you have any questions about GJS or anything that you need help with, just you, you can find me on Twitter and uh, you can ask me anything. Yeah. Darren, is there anything you'd like to share with us? Yeah, apart from the stuff we talked about, I don't have anything super explicit, uh, but randomly, I played an amazing video game recently called It Takes Two, and I played it with my nine-year-old and we beat it together and just unprecedented playing experience. It's amazing. It's got a great story. It's funny. A lot of fun things. So I would plug It Takes Two. Awesome. I'm going to have to try. I'm going to have to try that one out. I've been looking for a good co-op game. And Mikey is, Mikey B like is saying that he would love to contribute to View Stripe. Joff, what would be the best way uh, for people to get involved? Right. So first of all, they can start with the issues in the issues page. So basically, I, if I have time, I give a uh, reply to the issues and interact with them there so basically that's the, the only channel that i have right now but twitter is also available awesome um, you got you got a contributor over here jeff i'm totally going to come contribute right thanks oh that's great that that's what we like to hear all right joff darren thank you so much for being our guest audience thank you for thank you so much for the awesome questions and just interactivity it sounds like typescript is the way to go by a pretty large margin so again thank you so much for the awesome questions and a huge shout out to my colleagues especially paul in the chat helping out for their help as well. As always, let us know if you have any feedback. We'll see you in the, the next Stripe Dev Live next month. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Charles. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you, Joff. Thank you, Darren.